Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. Uh, the question I have today is, how can one plus one equal one? You say, well, that's impossible. Just ask a kindergarten child or a child in the first grade, and they'll tell you one plus one equals two. You've always been taught that, haven't you? Well, the Bible shows us an instant where one plus one equals one. We're, why don't you turn with me to Genesis chapter two? And while you're turning there, we have two important booklets that we're giving away today for free. It costs you nothing. The first booklet is just what do you mean born again? Or what do you mean to be saved? What does it mean to be saved? And it says here at the bottom of the booklet, don't be too sure you know. Many religious people talk about being born again, yet they don't really know what Christ meant by those words. The truth is surprising, startling, here made so plain you will understand. I dropped my pen. I had a red pen here a little while ago. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, and the second booklet is, Why Were You Born? And that, at the bottom of the booklet, it has, Do you really know why you were born? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out? And that's for you. Most fail to understand that purpose. Read this booklet. You will be surprised. I guarantee you'll be surprised. You can have these two booklets for free, no cost, no obligation. You, you could have a DVD of this program for free. And let's go into the Bible. How, how is it possible that one plus one equals one? How is it possible? Well, let's find out. We're going to Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. And here it says in verse 21, it says, And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. First operation took place. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. In the Hebrew, it's Isha, because she was taken out of man. And the Hebrew word for man is Ish. So we have Ish and Isha. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother. Hey, wait a minute. Hold it right there. How did he know about a mother and a father, father and a mother? How could he possibly know? He never had one. God created Adam. He created Eve. Okay, God taught him what a father and mother were. And shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. Now, wait a second. How is that possible? I'm asking you a question. How's it possible that one man and one woman can come together and be one? I thought one and one was two. Didn't you? Well, where did God get one at? What was the purpose of using the word one? Now, in Hebrew, the word one is echad. Now, the Jews, every single day, they read the Shema. Shema is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, 
the Lord is one. And they use the word echad. The same word used here. Now there's another Hebrew word for one, and it's called yachid. Yachid, Y-A-H-I-D, transliterated. Yachid means an absolute one. Cannot be any more than one. But echad could be one group, could be one church, one family, one group of people. So it's a different understanding of the word one. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 and let's look in verse 26. In verse 26 it says here, And God said, let us, wait a minute, us is plural, isn't it? Isn't us plural? It's a plural pronoun. Make man in our, isn't that plural also? Image, after our likeness, again, plural. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Okay, this word God is the word Elohim. Elohim, it ends with an I am. Now, the word for God, a single God, would be El, E-L. But Elohim means gods. Now let's see that. We're going to see that in just a moment. Let's go back now to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And let's look at verse 3. Exodus 20 verse 3. And here it says, you shall have no other gods. This word gods is Elohim. It's the same word that we find in the very beginning. It's the same word, Elohim. And here it's used in the plural sense. You shall have no other gods before me. So we learn something here that this word Elohim could be singular or it could be plural, but it is a plural noun. It's not a singular noun. It can be used both ways, however. So let's look in John chapter 1. John chapter 1, and we'll look in verse 1. In John chapter 1, it says, in the beginning. See it here? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. How's that possible? How can a Word be God? Well, let's find out. The same was in the beginning with God. So this Word was always with God. All things were made by Him. Who? The Word. And without Him was not anything made that was made. So this Word made the earth and everything in it. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Let's drop down now to uh, verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Who's he talking about here? He's talking about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was in the world. He was with God 
in the beginning or a beginning would be more accurate and they comprise the Elohim. I'll show you that. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Well, if you become the son of God, you are coming into the God family. There is God the Father, there is God the Son. Now those two make up the family of God. Now, if you have power to become the sons of God, you come into the God family, even to them that believe on his name. Now, let's go to John chapter 14. Let's go first to John chapter 3. We'll go to John chapter 3, and it says here, verse 1, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And the same came to Jesus by night. Why did he come to him by night? He didn't want anyone to see him come. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know. Who is we? These are the Pharisees. We know that you are a teacher come from God. If they knew he was a teacher come from God, why didn't they respect him? For no man could do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Well, Jesus cuts right to the chase. Right off the bat, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Nicodemus, he threw Nicodemus a curve because Nicodemus couldn't possibly understand what he said. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And this Nicodemus was thinking physically. Jesus was speaking spiritually. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, this is baptism, and of the Spirit, so he has to have God's Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh. You're flesh and I'm flesh, and we were born in flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, you must be born again. And he explains about the wind blowing where it wants to blow, and it's invisible and you can't see it. And that's what he's talking about. It's invisible, you can't see it. Now let's go to John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, we'll start in verse 17. John 14, verse 17. Even, the, oh, verse 16, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. Now this is the Holy Spirit. That he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. So God's Holy Spirit dwells within a Christian. Let's understand that. That's very important that we understand that. Verse 21. So John chapter 14. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just go down here a little ways. Uh, chapter, verse 21. He who keeps my commandments has my commandments and keeps them. It is he that loves me, and he who loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. And uh, we're, we're coming back very shortly. Please don't go away. We've got more to explain. We'll be right back. 
If you're living with diabetes and have Medicare or private insurance, here is some great news. Call United States Medical Supply today and we'll send you the smallest glucose meter in the world, absolutely free. It only takes a speck of blood and it gives me my results in five seconds. And there's no coding for easier, more accurate results. Don't let diabetes get in the way of living. Give us a call today at United States Medical Supply and get the smallest meter in the world for free. Get ready, America! The Affordable Health Care Act is here, and it's got everyone asking, how do I find affordable health insurance that's right for me? The answer is simpler than you think. Pick up the phone and call I Can Benefit right now. Waiting for you is a team of licensed insurance agents who understand health care reform and can help you find the right plan to take care of you and your family's health. Don't wait. Call now and get the answers you deserve and a price you'll love. Call toll-free 1-800-426-2163. Hi, I'm Joan London, and if you're worried about your parent or a loved one living alone like I was, and you want reliable senior care information, then call A Place for Mom, the nation's largest senior living referral service. With one phone call, you'll get free information on assisted living, Alzheimer's care, nursing homes, even important financial information. It's a free service, so call now. Call now, 1-800-908-0987. Are you being denied the things you want because of bad credit? Say goodbye to bad credit and hello to credit repair. Call the credit repair hotline right now to start the process of repairing your bad credit and improving your credit score. Start rebuilding your credit today and begin working to qualify for the credit card, car, or home you've always wanted. Call now to start the process of repairing your credit. You're going to love how good your credit report can look. Call now. 800-809-1385. I'd like you to turn to John chapter 10 and look here in verse 28, well, 27. John chapter 10, verse 27. Let's read it. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life. We've never experienced eternal life. You live forever. You can't die, and they shall never perish. They can't die. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Wait a second here. I see two, two individuals. I is one, Father is one, so I plus my Father are one. Now we can understand, I and my Father are one. God is one. God is one what? God is one family. There's the Father and there's the Son. That makes a family. Right there. Okay, it's important we understand that. Let's go now to John chapter 20. John chapter 20, let's look in verse 17. Jesus is here on earth, and he says unto Mary, Touch me not, right after his resurrection, for I am not yet ascended to my Father. So here is the Son going to ascend to his Father. But go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father, your father, so, and to my God and your God. As I said again, this is a family. God is a family. He's an echad. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Well, first let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 is, is, we need to look at verse 7. Because the carnal mind, that's the fleshly mind, that's the mind that's not concerned about the spiritual, that's the mind of just about everybody at one time or another, is enmity, that means hostile, against God, for it is not subject 
to the law of God, and neither indeed can be. So the carnal mind cannot keep God's law. You have to have a spiritual mind. So then they who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God, this is the Holy Spirit, okay? This is not the third person of the Trinity. This is God's Holy Spirit. The spirit of God dwell in you. So the spirit of God dwells in the Christian. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You're not a Christian if you don't have God's Holy Spirit. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life, eternal life, because of righteousness. Now let's go down here to verse 14. Let's go down to verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They come into the family of God as sons. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. We're adopted by God. We come into his family through the process of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, this word Abba is an interesting word. Uh, Paul had written all of this, his books, in Greek. But this is an Aramaic word that the Greeks don't have a, a word for it. Abba means daddy, a little child holding his hand up in his father's hand, looking up into his father's eyes and saying, Abba, 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 Abba. The spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Wow, this is really neat. Now let's go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. You know, there's three ways, three ways a person comes into a family. Let me explain. The first way is through birth. When my son was born into our family, he became a stall. We, he came into the stall family, he became a stall. The second way a, someone could come into the family is through the process of adoption. So if I wanted to adopt a child, that child would carry my name. It would also be a stall. Now the third way a child comes in is through marriage. When I married my wife, she became a stall. She came into the stall family. Now God works the same way. Let's read it in Ephesians chapter 5 and let's read verse 25. Ephesians 5, verse 25. And here it says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify, that means make holy, and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but it, that should be holy and without blemish. Now let's go down here. Verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So we become members of the God family. Now let's look. Let's read it again up here. Verse 31 is an important verse. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother. This is exactly what Adam said. Adam said that. He should leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. That's what he said back 
in Genesis chapter 1. This is a great mystery. Now, Paul solves that mystery for us. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and see that the wife, that the wife see that she reverence her husband. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19 is very, very important. Verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. Who's he going to marry? He's going to marry the church. And his wife, the church, has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Now these are saints. These are people whom God is working with. And, it's, and he says here, and he said unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Now let, let's wind it up here. Let's make sure we all understand this. We, like uh, Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. You're born again spiritually into the family of God. Paul said in Romans chapter 8 that we are adopted into the family. Therefore, we call God our Abba. Abba means daddy. And the third way we come in to the God family is through marriage. We marry the Lamb. We marry Jesus Christ and we come into the God family. We become echad, one with God, one God family. It's really simple. One plus one equals one. Now, we have the two booklets we'd like you to order today. Just call us up. What do you mean, born again? And, uh, and the other booklet is, why were you born? Just call us. We have sad, Saturday, we meet uh, for a Bible study at 1 o'clock at 1701 East Missouri. Come join us. Bring your Bible. 1 o'clock on Saturday, bring your Bible, a notebook, and pen. That's all you need. And your questions. We'll be happy to work with you with your questions. And now, until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth? with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.